This demonstration will focus on a flowing fluid inside a pipe. As the fluid travels along the axial direction, it loses heat to the environment, but it also generates heat internally through, for example, an exothermic chemical reaction. Additionally, some details about the geometry and properties of the fluid are given in this specific problem. In the first task, we are asked to derive the differential equations for the temperature profile in the actual direction with and without neglecting the diffusive heat transport in the direction of the flow. We can derive the differential equation for the temperature profile by considering the energy balance for an infinitesimal element. In this scenario, we'll employ a one-dimensional element to simplify this analysis. The first step will be setting up the energy balance. The general energy balance for an open system reads that the temporal change of inner energy equals the net rate of attraction plus the net rate of heat transport by conduction and convection plus the internal heat generation. For Ur element, energy will be transported due to the motion of the fluid entering and leaving. And when it travels through Ur element, some of its energy is lost by convection to the environment because the temperature of the pipe is lower than that of our fluid. But at the same time, some energy is generated due to the volumetric source term. And since the temperature of the fluid is not the same at every position in the pipe, heat can diffuse from the higher temperature region to the lower temperature region. Therefore, we have to take into account the diffusive heat fluxes entering and leaving as well. In cases where we have a relatively high mass flow, the attractive terms are much bigger compared to the diffusive terms. And for this reason, diffusion is often neglected in those cases. So we have defined all relevant terms for our energy balance, and if we substitute them into the balance, it will change to this. And the second step we have to take from here on will be finding the expression for all relevant terms. The term describing heat diffusion will be straightforward, because we have seen Fourier's law now multiple times. For the cross-sectional area is the area being normal to the direction in which the fluid travels, which is from pi times d to the power of 2 over 4. Then we have to define a term describing the energy transport due to the motion of the fluid, which is the product of the mass flow and the specific enthalpy. But often the specific enthalpy is substituted by Cp times T because they are the same under constant pressure. However, the mass flow is not given, but we can express it as the product of the fluid density, the average fluid velocity, and the area being normal to the direction of the flow. Similarly, we have to find expressions for the terms describing the energy loss due to diffusion and fluid motion. Since we are dealing with an infinitesimal element, the temperature profile can be approximated to be linear within this region. And therefore, we can use the Taylor series expansion to approximate these terms. The fifth component we have to define will be the energy generated within the element which is from the volumetric source term multiplied by the volume of the infinitesimal element. Since our infinitesimal element is a cylinder with cross-sectional area pi times d to the power 2 over 4 and height dx, the volume yields from the product of those two terms. Then the last term to define is the heat loss by convection. This can be written by use of Newton's law of cooling which states that the heat loss equals the heat transfer coefficient times the surface area times some relevant temperature difference. Or relevant temperature difference in this case is the temperature difference between the fluid and the pipe wall. For our infinitesimal element, the surface area yields from the perimeter, which is d times pi, multiplied by the height of the cylinder, dx. Then we get to the third step, which is substituting all terms into the balance and rewriting it to make it look cleaner. which eventually yields this expression, which describes the differential equation for the temperature profile in the direction of the flow, which includes the effect of diffusive heat transport. The second equation we had to derive was the differential equation for the temperature profile of the flow, where we neglect diffusive heat transport. For this reason, this term can be canceled out, and we can rewrite this expression, which yields the following result. So this example shows how the differential equation for the temperature profile in the flow direction can be found from an energy balance of an infinitesimal element. In the second task, we are asked to find the heat transfer coefficient between the pipe's inner wall and the fluid when the temperature of the fluid remains to be the inlet temperature for every position within the pipe. 
To do this, we can set up an energy balance around the entire pipe. For this balance, the first term to be included will be the term describing the energy transport due to the motion of the fluid. Furthermore, we have the term describing the heat generation within the entire pipe. And the last term is the heat loss due to convection. Note that diffusion should not be included because the way we have defined the boundaries of our element, because it spans from the inlet to the outlet, and thus no diffusion of heat can be transported through these interfaces. So our energy balance for this problem will be the following. And now we have to define all relevant terms again. So the energy transport due to the fluid motion at the inlet and outlet yields from the mass flow times the specific heat capacity times our respective temperatures. We've defined the definition of the mass flow in the previous task already. For both the inlet and the outlet, the temperature of the fluid is the same, and thus both expressions are to be the same. The second term, the heat generated in the pipe, yields from the volumetric source term multiplied by the volume of the pipe, which is the cross-sectional area times the pipe length. And then the last term, which describes the heat loss by convection, can be written by use of Newton's law of cooling again, where the surface area is that of the entire interface between the pipe and the fluid. So having defined all terms, we can put them into the energy balance and do the rewriting, which uses this expression for the heat transfer coefficient between the pipe's inner wall and the fluid. And this example demonstrates how the heat transfer coefficient can be found from a global energy balance around the entire pipe. I would like to thank you for your attention and see you next time.